Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overall series in Curl Space Program 1.1.2. In this episode we are going to try and send a Kerbal to orbit and bring that Kerbal back safely and I've decided to make some adjustments to the Prometheus rocket in order to make that happen with a little bit more of a safety margin. So we've got three LR89 engines at the bottom here. The overall diameter is increased from 2.8 meters to 3 meters. There's still a single LR105 there but uh, we've increased the burn time a bit and uh, the thrust weight ratio is a little bit better and then the final stage the utilization is a little bit lower and the shape of the tank is different because of the three meter form factor of the rest of the rocket and overall we've got about 500 meters per second more than we had before which is not great considering you've got an extra engine at the bottom but we've got a higher initial thrust weight ratio the downside of all of this is that our max thrust weight ratio on the first stage is five instead of less than four uh, so Valentina who is going to be our pilot is going to have to put up with that but otherwise uh, hopefully this will give a uh, more safety margin to make sure that if we need to abort to orbit we can do that uh, the problem isn't with the first stage if it fails on the first stage then the capsule will just do its normal abort and parachute back down. But uh, if we're pretty far into orbit and then an engine quits, we have to be able to deal with that. Uh, it's a little bit harder for the if the problem is with the third stage, but I've added some extra fuel to the pod's own service module. So, um, well, altogether we've got about uh, 750 meters per second of margin if you combine in the launch escape system uh, so hopefully that'll be enough we'll see I mean what can we do there's only so much I mean I could uh, keep making the rocket larger and larger and ultimately give it enough Delta V to reach the moon and in that case I suppose we would have enough margin to make sure that uh, the Kerbal will safely reach orbit but um, I think this is good enough I think we're going to go with this so Prometheus 2 because of the changes and it will be Valentina who goes because we have no other pilot at the moment so that is the plan let us build and I'll meet you on the launch pad come to think of it I guess we could have put uh, Bill or Bob on the rocket as well since we do have the controller still there we've still got the able avionics core but here we go SAS on Throttle up, Valentina looks ready, everything else looks a go, we don't have to line up with anything. Yep. Okay. Ignition. And launch. So I think this is the first launch in this series on my new computer. So we should see better performance overall. Though nothing stops the micro stutters in the middle of all the things. That is just uh, somewhere between Kerbals and Mods. There will be micro stutters like that one there. If we could get those ironed out that would be great for the cinematics and all. It's hard to correct that in editing, a uh, micro stutter like that, like that. I mean, that's really annoying thing to try and correct when you're editing a video. And I, I never bothered. <laughs> uh, it would be way too tedious. Unless you're doing a really short video, like two minutes, three minutes. And because everything else is going much faster, the micro stutters seem to occur much more frequently. Okay, here we go. High G forces. Valentina is up to the task. Okay, set. Ignition. I forgot to tune down those separatrons. They are supposed to be going for three seconds, but I need to thrust them at them in order to make them do that. Okay, you're ready at 1G, so not too much of a problem here. But the third stage lasts for a while, so we have to make sure we have enough time to wap lapses for that. K 
Okay, I have this is past 200 kilometers. G-force is pretty high. Sort of wondering whether I should pitch down or not, but again, the next stage lasts for five minutes. Okay, I probably should have pitched down a little bit more earlier. All right, separation. And ignition. All right, RD0109 is ignited, and we continue. We have about 600 meters per second to spare on this stage, and in total, if we uh, want to make orbit and make sure that we return, probably have more like 1,200, 1,400 extra. So, I mean, substantial margins on this thing. Definitely try to add those margins in. I think the three engine configuration is sort of similar to something Nathan Kell is using in his uh, Realism Overhaul tutorial. I haven't watched the tutorials, but he mentioned it on his live stream. He actually does uh, Twitch live streams these days. You might want to catch those. Nathan Kell is like uh, in charge of many of the realism overhaul things, modding, and is involved with squad these days as well. Bug fixing. Yep, everything is looking good. We passed Apoapsis as planned. Okay, we have loss of power on the RD0109. Oops. Test flight uh, has attempted to get us. Loss of thrust. Not just loss of thrust, loss of ISP as well. Oh no, actually just loss of thrust. Okay, that's interesting. That's different from the normal. It's uh, not loss of performance. Loss of performance is loss of ISP. But in this case it's just loss of thrust, about 50% uh, thrust. So all I have to do is pitch up a little bit more. Actually I don't really need to pitch up at all. We were all right to begin with. So no problems, and now we're safe for orbit, even if this engine fails. Okay, I'll try and make it relatively circular, that's good enough. 253, 227, that is fine. Alright, we are going to dump this stage. It'll remain in orbit, unfortunately. Okay, and... There we go. All right, so Valentina is in orbit. Let's get a crew report. Okay, and uh, I guess we can transmit the data. There shouldn't be any problem with that. I don't think she can. Yeah, she can't EVA yet. So there's it as far as what we can do. Well, I guess we can do it by biome. It said over Earth's water. So let's let's make sure that Valentina does a complete orbit before coming back down. Tropics, okay. Grasslands. Okay, Earth's desert, alright. Maybe able to hit highlands or mountains over Mexico. Let me just wing it. Mountains, there you go. Highlands, okay, well I'll take that. Well, we're already on grasslands here. Nah, let's just move on. The thing I'm most tense about is return, re-entry. So let's get over Australia, do the retro burn and all the things. Try to match how it was with the test pod. And then we will see. Okay, we're connected through Australia. I'm gonna go a little bit past so we're further into the Atlantic just in case and orbit retrograde RCS on things are wiggling retro alright that's 75 okay uh, it's wiggling a lot though let me unlock the um, fuel up here 
so it can stabilize after it lets it go. Right. Decouple. And back retrograde. So uh, actually I have surface retrograde. We're uh, our periapsis is getting higher for no good reason. Um, uh, much higher actually. Doesn't seem like any direction on the thrusters helps that. Um, so let me turn prograde temporarily. Okay, that's a bit better, but boy, it changes the periapsis quite a lot, doesn't it? The further we are away from periapsis, the more it can change. So let's get closer to periapsis so it doesn't vary so much when we maneuver. Okay, getting close to the atmosphere here. Let's go back to where we need to go. RCS on. And roll I wanted at 180. And descent mode on. I haven't upgraded to 1.1.3 yet, partly because uh, test flight is still in a beta release on that version. So I'll wait until they're sure that it's uh, it's a full release, because nothing sends shivers down my spine than a potentially problematic release of test flight. Um, also, procedural fairings I don't think has been updated, and there are a few other mods that I have question marks about. So, so that's what I'm holding off for now. Even though RP0, Realism Overhaul, RSS have all been updated, uh, so has Real Fuels. Also, it's nice to keep things consistent. Uh, anytime you upgrade, you introduce unexpected bugs. Of course, some bugs are solved, but at least I know which bugs are in 1.1.2. I'll we'll discover new bugs in 1.1.3. So, okay, everything nominal. Approaching Baja California. We are slowing down now. Gulf of California. Capsule getting a little bit red. There is ablation going on. Yeah, arm the parachute. Verify the information. 0.3 atmospheres. Uh, this one is not correct. Forgot to fix that. Also 0.3 atmospheres or so. Okay, we have flame effects. Charred ablator is increasing, rate of ablation is increasing. Now approaching the Gulf of Mexico. I expect that we will splash down in the Gulf of Mexico. Gonna turn RCS off now. Just let the descent mode thing take care of it. We are at 4 G's. rate of ablation is decreasing now. We've got a bit of a roll. I might turn on RCS again to handle that. Okay, uh, 5.85 G's was the peak. Gonna get RCS back on to maintain the roll. But soon we won't need it anymore. Might as well dump the hydrazine in HTP anyway. Okay, waiting parachute deployment. They will be unbalanced. The two are different, again. Well, uh, at least we know that sort of works. Very good. And we are at 4.9 meters per second, as with the test. Okay, splash down and recover before some weird glitch happens. Alright, so Valentina completed orbit and returned safely. Hopefully the contract recognized that. I don't know if uh, we actually fulfilled the contract conditions. <laughs> uh, that's a problem. Mm, let's see. It might have required her to stay up there for longer, I don't know.
Let's see. Um, all right, we got funds back. Let's see. And Valentina leveled up. We broke the sound barrier. Okay. First crude orbital. Okay, so we uh, definitely fulfilled that. Passed the Karma online. Yeah, obviously. Uh, the stage was destroyed. Crude speed record. Crude speed record. Crude altitude records. Yeah, all, all the crude records have been accomplished. Yeah, totally spammed the message folder there. Okay, so that has been done. Uh, let's talk about what to do next. Okay, so I've opted to try for the geostationary satellite again. And we can't switch to Kuru, which would be a better place to launch from. But we will launch from Cape Canaveral and try and do the inclination change out at uh, our apoapsis above 35,700 uh, kilometers. I have opted to adapt the Navigator satellite, uh, for which was for Mars and Venus, for this job. And so we have 14,755 meters per second to use. The, uh, but I'm still using the Mammoth rocket, and we could use a larger rocket, but hopefully this will be good enough. We'll have to see. Um, it can barely get off the ground there. The sea level thrust weight ratio is a little bit low. Uh, overall, the thrust weight ratios are pretty restrained except for the Agena stage that will actually help us make our transfer out to geostationary. I, I don't know how it will be. Uh, it's a tough call. We've got about 5,000 here. And then... So, I, I don't know, it's not really getting into orbit on these three stages. Remember, the Agena stage has uh, multiple ignitions. It's only got two, though. Uh, so, you can imagine, if we don't get into orbit on these three stages, then we have to finish orbit with this one, and then make our transfer out with that one. But then we won't be able to use the rest of its fuel in order to make the adjustment at apoapsis, which would be really annoying. Uh, we would rather make sure that these three stages, the bottom three stages, definitely get us get us to uh, orbit, and so that we can time our transfer out properly. So maybe we should reduce the size of this to make sure that happens. Part of it is the fairings. Uh, so 5,200, let's call that, and that should be enough for orbit. If we add the fairings on, though, that cuts it down a little bit. Now I don't have the long-range antenna on this uh, particular probe, unlike the normal navigators. So it's Navigator A because it doesn't have a long-range antenna. Uh, maybe this will be better. Hopefully. Uh, we really do need to get into orbit first. Uh, because we want to make the burn to Apoapsis, the geostationary uh, transfer burn, at the equator. Otherwise we can't really fix our inclination properly. Okay. So that is the plan. Let us build one of these. All right, here we are. And while we were time warping through the build phase, uh, mature orbital rocketry got unlocked. So we have new engines. That means new rockets. But for now, we've got the mammoth here. SAS on, thrall is up. Ignition. And launch. SS. For some reason, the progress vector is dipping down faster than I thought it would. Well, I have to catch up to being able to play this game in real time. I have to make some adjustments for that. Separation. Ignition. Okay, two LR-105 seem to be all right. I'll probably be staging the fairings during this stage, so let's prepare for that. So far, we're good for our plan to use the third stage to get into orbit. All right, staging the fairings. All right, fairings staged successfully. Staging and ignition. 
All right, four Regina engines have been lit. Let's extend the payload's antennae. It's pretty close now as far as the Delta V. Yeah, we might not get completely into orbit on this stage, but hopefully we can ensure that we're in space above the equator, in which case we can then burn out. If we're not in space above the equator, then we have a problem. And this is the Navigator 2 that I based it on, by the way, so the RCS thrusters are full RCS thrusters, not just, not just uh, single nozzle ones. They're thruster blocks. Okay, about to complete this stage. And yeah, we're short of orbit, but how about the equator? Um, first of all, tough to see exactly where the equator is. Just looking at it, uh, we could get coordinates though. Surface info. I mean, it shows us crashing around there. We'll go as far as we can, I suppose. But it doesn't, uh, no guarantees right now. Okay. Let me throw down, set. And how about RCS pushing us forward? Oh, not what I really wanted it to do. Let me uh, lock the stuff up here first. We do recall that there was substantial RCS on this stage, so that's nice. In fact, we can throttle up here, try and use the RCS to boost us up a little bit. I'll use about half of my hydrazine on this stage to boost us up, but it's not really doing too much good. We're still only at 26 degrees north, we want to be at zero. Okay, I'll start the Gina engine at 145 kilometers, wherever that is in terms of our coordinates. Though we have to have connection, <laughs> that, that's an uh, important factor. It's still 16 degrees north, 146 kilometers. We still don't have a connection. We're a little bit too low, I think to acquire at uh, the Canary Islands. Uh-oh. Well, thankfully Smart ASS couldn't care less whether we have a connection or not, but I can't stage. If we had just a little, if we just had a little bit less Delta V in this stage and a little more in the pre uh, overall, I mean in the previous one, if we had just a little bit more, we would have made it, but this is not good obviously. I mean, if we're not going to connect through the Canary Islands, unless some satellite will sort of help us out here. That one isn't. I mean, that one is helping everybody else, that Lancer too, but not us. Okay, yeah, this was a bad thing. Okay, well, it's just going to fall to its fiery death, I'm afraid. This was after the excitement of being able to bring Valentina back safely. I guess I derped on this one. Okay, all right. Well, if it comes to you win some, you lose some, I'd rather lose the one without the Kerbal in. And here we go. are very slowly disintegrating. Okay, well, there you have it. Well, I'll try and do better next time, but on that note, I will say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.